So, you want to learn how to intubate. Well, if you don't have a rock solid grasp of the irrelevant anatomy for intubation, then one day when things go wrong, and trust me, as an anesthesiologist who's intubated countless number of patients, I can assure you that things will go wrong one day. You won't know how to think on your feet and adapt in the moment to intubate the most difficult of patients. To that end, we created this video so that that does not happen. Thanks for watching. It might just help you save someone's life one day. Medical Specialists Associates, making medical education more accessible. So thank you for watching. I'm Christopher Viscopoulos of Medical Specialist Associates, and this particular topic is on airway anatomy for intubation, but it is not just anatomy. We'll also talk about the airway equipment that interacts with the anatomy. And this is essential because you can't just have a static understanding of the anatomy. You have to know how that anatomy might change or how you might manipulate that anatomy based upon the airway equipment that we use. Reference to those apparatuses, let's start here with the Mac blade. And the details of these blades and apparatuses will be covered in the each individual section that covers how to use them. Here, I'm just gonna give just enough information that's gonna be relevant to the anatomy that I'll talk about. So the first thing that I want you to notice here is just that this blade is curved. And what does that mean? Well, you're gonna learn that what that means is that when you have a curved blade, that the tip goes into the molecular. So when we see the anatomy, you'll understand why that's important. Over here on the side, you have a tongue sweep, and this is what it looks like here. And this is just made for you to sweep the tongue out of the way when you put, again, that tip into the molecular. This blade is curved, but it's not that curved enough to where when you go in through the mouth, you will be able to see the glottic opening directly by looking through the mouth. Now, why did I mention that last point? Because on this next slide here, that's in contrast to the glide scope. So, wow, you can see how curved this particular glide scope is. Here, first, I show you that it's really two pieces. It's the outer covering here, and then this is the camera portion. So the camera portion goes in and stops here, and here you can see it ending right here. Now, this particular apparatus is so curved that when you go in and you put this tip into the molecular, remember, curved blades go into the molecular, that you're not going to be able to see the glottic opening by looking through the mouth down at the glottis. And the manufacturers knew that. And so that's why here you have the camera. It's through the camera that you'll see the glottic opening, not through direct vision. And though here I just mentioned the glide scope, this is true really for any, uh, for the most part, really, uh, any video laryngoscope. So next here is the Miller blade. So first I'll show a picture here of the Miller blade. It's relatively straight. I'll comment that it's a little tipped up over here in just a second, but it's relatively straight. Here's a picture of it from on top, again, just showing how straight it is. But what I do with this particular portion here, I blow up here. And you can see that there's just a gentle uptick right here of just a little lip. So this blade's not straight. So you don't put this blade into the molecular that we'll see. You put this blade a little deep in and you actually clip the epiglottis and this will become clear to you in just a minute when I go over the anatomy. Last apparatus device here is our LMA. And so here's a picture of the LMA just looking straight down at it. Here's a picture of the LMA looking from the upside down. And here you can see the opening of the LA, uh, LMA to where we have gas exchange in and out. And probably the most important view here is the one from the side. You see here the LMA from the side, and this is what it'll look like when it sits in the back of the, the pharynx, sitting here with that little opening right here so gas can come in and out through the glottic opening. So now let's transition to our two anatomic slides. And the first one is here, and I wanted to spend a little time on it because it's really important for our curved blades. And so I wanna talk about the hyoepiglottic ligament. Before I do, let me just make sure that you know exactly what we're looking at. What we're looking at here is, here is the hyoid bone. Here is the vollecula right here. Here's that hyoepiglottic ligament that I'll talk about in a second. Here is the epiglottis. Back here are the two arytenoids. And right in the middle here is our vocal cords. Here are our true vocal cords down here, these two. And they're both closed right now. If they're open, you can see straight down through the trachea. 
here are our false focal cords here on the side. So if these were open, this is the view that you should see. This is what we would call a grade one view during direct laryngoscopy if you went in. So why did I want to spend a second on this hyaluepiglottic ligament? Well, because I mentioned two blades that were curved, the glide scope or any video laryngoscope and the Mac blade. And what you do is you put those tips I mentioned here into the vollecula. So why is that important? Because when you put the tip into the vollecula, you're gonna depress down the hyoepiglottic ligament. Why is that important? Because when you push this structure down, what do you do? You lift the epiglottis up in this direction and you're able to see the cords. And so that's why I talk about the curved blades you put in the vollecula. One of the reasons why is to depress this so you lift up that epi uh, the epiglottis so you can see. So now let's turn our attention to this particular uh, anatomic slide here. And I will get to each of our different apparatuses that we had mentioned in a second, but first I'm just gonna take a second and go over the anatomy here. So here we see our mouth opening, our teeth, our tongue. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the tongue back. And here, the very posterior portion of the tongue, we see the vollecula. The vollecula in between the posterior portion of the tongue and the epiglottis here. Right in here is where that hyoepiglottic ligament would be. So again, curved blades, we put our tip here into the vollecula. If we follow this down a little more here, here's our trachea, here's where our vocal cords would be. Around here or so, right here is where our hyoid bone would be. And back here is our esophagus. So first let's talk about the MAC blade, the first one that we had mentioned. Well, MAC blade, curved blade again, wanna go in the vollecula. So we put our MAC blade in, and what we do is we put our tip here into the vollecula. When we do, we push down that hyoepiglottic ligament. And when we push it down, that lifts up the epiglottis so we're able to see the vocal cords. Now, in addition to doing that, what we do is when our tip is in here in the vollecula, what we do is we lift up in this direction here. It's a 45 degree angle up towards the ceiling. And when we lift up in this direction here, what we do, is we further lift up the epiglottis. What do people do when they're first starting out very commonly to intubate? Well, what they do is they get into the vollecula here and for some reason, they rock the back, the, make, the, the MAC blade. When you rock back, what you do is you do two things. One, you can damage the teeth when you rock back. But also what you do here is you push the epiglottis down as you're rocking back and you're closing off your view. And beginner uh, intubators don't understand why is that when they're rocking back, they're losing their view. Well, you're losing the view because you're closing the epiglottis. So you want to pull up in this particular direction. So again, and the MAC blade is such to where it's curved, but it's not curved enough to where you will be able to have a direct line of sight down here to see the vocal cord uh, opening. Now, next is the glide scope or other type of video scope. Here again, it's curved, right? So what you do is, is you put that curved tip into the vollecula, again, you depress uh, the hyoepiglottic ligament down, you begin to lift up the epiglottis, and again, you pull up in this particular direction here, 45 degrees towards the ceiling. When you do that, you create more space and you have a better view of the vocal cords. But recall that you had a very long tip of that glide scope and the camera's far back. So the tip's gonna be in here and the camera's gonna be somewhere here. And it's with the camera that you're going to be able to see the vocal cords, not through direct vision. It's so curved that you don't have direct vision. Now, that's important because when you use the glide scope itself, it's going to come with a curved stylet. You have to use that curved stylet to be able to curve in all the way and follow that blade to get in. But it's so curved that when you get in, and we'll talk about this in depth in the video on the glide scope, that you could hit here the anterior portion of the trachea. And during that video, I go over a technique where you pull back the stylet a little bit, and that allows you to float the endotracheal tube in. A very common problem, I introduce it here. This goes into a depth when you see our videos, uh, both live intubating patients, as well as uh, with the use of the mannequin. So please watch those videos. Next is the Miller blade here. Now recall, that's a straight blade with just a little gentle up tip. So that being straight, what we do is, is we put it in, and we usually put it in straight back, and it goes back about this far right here. So we go past the epiglottis usually with, uh, with, the two, uh, with the blade. We're a little deep. And then what we do is we gently lift it out and lift it up. And when we do, we come back, and then we clip the epiglottis. 
When we clip the epiglottis, now we bring the whole apparatus up. Remember, this is different from the curved blades, right? Mac blade and the glide scope, we went into the molecular. Here I'm telling you, we go deep, and as we're pulling out, we actually clip the epiglottis and again, pull up in that 45 degree direction here to bring the entire apparatus up. If you rock back again with the Miller blade, you're gonna lose your view. So pull up and you will have a direct view of the glottic opening to put your tube in. Last here's the LMA. So with the LMA, what we're gonna do is we're gonna push it straight back here. And when it gets straight back, boom, you'll feel like a little pop. It'll come in and it'll seed in the posterior portion of the pharynx. And here it'll seed. Very commonly when it seeds here, what you'll do is you'll put a little more maybe air into it if you didn't have all your air to begin with. And that'll further push out the pharyngeal tissues here. And then with that little opening that'll be right about here that you recall, it'll push the air here in straight down into the trachea. And that's how that particular uh, device works. So you want it seated right about here so you get, you get that air in. If it's too deep, it could be down here and you could occlude that tip by having, it, having the tip too deep into the esophagus. And if it's too high up here, maybe you might lose some air by hitting the epiglottis or going into the molecular, et cetera. Thank you for watching. Please consider sharing your suggestions or comments with us at the email address listed. And please also continue to visit with us at our website and our YouTube channel. To be instantly notified of when we release new content, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel as well. Thank you.